Welcome to the B. Andrews Radio Show. It is so good to have you with us today. We are coming to you from central Wisconsin. Yes, B. Andrews is back home from our Florida tour. And we are at the headquarters of the HBN, that's the Hambone Broadcasting Network, right here in downtown beautiful Hancock, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm your co-host today. I'm Eric Hambrock, one of the members of the B. Andrew Band. And our other co-host is across the room, the other member of the B. Andrews Band, and his name is John. Say hi, John. Hi. <laughs> kind of short today. John, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little... What? I'm short every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just, I, I just wanted to let you know I'm a little, I'm a little miffed. I, I, I saw, I saw some fake news today. I'm totally, totally dead serious about this. So I, I get up and I'm, I'm on the computer and I do my, I do my computer ritual. And that is before I check in to my email, I'm on Yahoo. Yahoo News is up and I just scan down through the headlines. And as I'm going down through the headlines, I'm getting more and more depressed as I'm seeing the headlines and I'm looking at all the politics and the negativity, which is one of the reasons why we don't do that stuff on this show, right? Okay. John's nodding his head. Yes. And uh, you can't see him, but, you know, if you got that rattler that I kept telling you about, you know, so people could hear your brain rattle when you nod, you know, they would know what you're doing. It'd work. Yeah, it would work. Be like a uh, rattlesnake tail. Yeah. Like, you don't. You don't. <laughs> your head doesn't move that fast, man. <laughs> okay. It just did. <laughs> Do it again. I wish you could see this, everybody. Anyway, so I'm scanning down through the Yahoo News, and as I'm going down through, I'm just getting more and more and more depressed. And then all of a sudden, this one article just takes this one headline, just takes me dead to the bottom. I mean, I, I couldn't get any lower. Oh, it, it was. It was like a lead balloon. Just <laughs> boom. Down it went. You, you got to hear this title. It says, Chick-fil-A introduces new sandwich like nothing else on their menu. And I sat there and I looked at that and it shows the picture of the new sandwich, right? right. Let me guess. It's got chicken on it. Yes! <laughs> I, I, now, I do not go to Chick-fil-A that often. I've only been twice. Both times is when we've been on our Florida tour. And that's the only time I've ever been to a Chick-fil-A. And I have not been... Um, uh, uh, I wasn't unimpressed. The chicken was good. Everything was good on it. I thought a little pricey for what I got, but the quality was really good. And, and when I walked up there and I saw their menus, two thirds of their menu is a sandwich. And the other two thirds of that menu and their sandwich, every one of the sandwiches had chicken on them. And I'm reading this article, and it says Chick-fil-A's new sandwich, like nothing else on their menu. It's a sandwich with chicken. I, that was it. I'm just like, oh, are you kidding me? What? Come on, news people. Are you, is that as good as you can get? <laughs> it just, that was well, it. I got to say, I'm miffed this morning, too. Oh? What's, yeah. what's yours? If you, if you haven't been able to tell, like, if you could smell the bleach in the room, I've got a mouse in here. And, and he's, there's a mouse in our studio and, and he's transgressed because not only has he pooped on my desk, but I have I have literally had to bleach and clean my controller because he peed. I have I saved up my money. Yes. And I bought a I bought a PS4. Yes. And you know, that mouse crawled up and peed on my controller. You realize that if, if it had been an Xbox, he wouldn't have done it. Well, that might be true. <laughs> I am. I am mad. He showed his disdain. I have picks that I keep up here for recording too. He pooped on them. On your pick? He picked it. He pooped on a pick? And I'm like looking across my desk and I, it, I am, I have a mousetrap set. He's, he's, he's gonna, I'll, I'll keep you apprised. Ooh, he's going down. We got dead, we got a, oh, we're going mouse hunting. Yes, this is, by the way, this would be number three. I've already killed two. Yes, yes. Urgh. So the mouse has transgressed in the house. In the house. In in the in in the studio, he pooped on a pick. 
and peed on my controller. Well, it's a PS4, dude. What do you want him to do? But it's my <laughs> PS4. <laughs> I told you if it had been an Xbox, he wouldn't have done it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful day here in central Wisconsin. We are going to reach 80 degrees today. That's what they say. So here we are in May, um, and, and it's going to reach 80 degrees. What is, it's just going to be an awesome day. And I'm feeling pretty good. Um, had a chiropractor's visit early this morning. So I'm, I'm all in or I'm all out. I'm not sure which way to say it. You know, the, the doctor, uh, Dr. Nate, if you're listening to me, Dr. Nate, uh, I've invited him to listen to this show, but I, I don't know if he does or not. But Dr. Nate, I tell you what, um, you keep working your magic on me. I told him this morning if it helped, he needed to put more weight into uh, getting me into alignment. I didn't care if he got on my back and tap danced. And uh, that, if that's what it took, go for it. I bet he could tap dance. That's just... <laughs> it just seems like the random scale back. Oh yeah, I know how to do that. <laughs> he might. I have no idea. Anyway, it, it it worked, and and then he he goes in and he takes those electrodes and he puts them on me and and uh, it, you know he said he wanted to do therapy on me. I told him all of his therapy needed to be from C one and up. And he's like, well, we could do that if you want. I go, yeah, but it's empty and the electric would just arc. <laughs> I get it. Uh, okay. Anyway, moving right along. Um, so it, it's been a great time being out on tour. We had our our um, our tales from the road that we did, and um, it 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 was a lot of fun being out. One of the things that happens when B. Andrews goes out, we we want to minister in very small areas and. Uh, small churches. We want to give them that opportunity. We want to try to take as big and contemporary of a sound to small churches and youth groups, places that probably wouldn't be able to afford or get a big band to come in, um, a building 429 kind of thing, and they can't afford that. So we want to bring that same type of sound, energy, Chris Tomlin kind of stuff to churches and youth groups and inspire them into worship or to bring the kind of music that would give us an opportunity to say, hey, uh, we want you to consider Jesus Christ um, and have that message and, and do all that. Even though that is our intent, there are so many times that when we go out, we have that planned. We plan with the places where we're going way in advance that usually isn't what the ministry turns out to be. Well, not there's other things. <laughs> yeah, um, we went the the one place that we went to. We were really hoping um, Port Charlotte. We played there at uh, Peace River uh, Church. There, oh man, beautiful setting. Uh, they have, I think, a couple of acres that sits out in front of their church. It was a beautiful, sunshiny day. They cook brats and hamburgers. They called it a, a Christian tailgate party and put signs out on the road pastor pastor mark he was out on the side of the road holding up signs as people was driving by yeah, trying to up, get him to he's come a on big in. guy he's hard to miss <laughs> and he had a big sign and and so forth we got done with that day um and we played with their their worship team at their church and they're really good their lead singer come out and she has this amazing voice it's one of those voices that's unique in its tone and it just just grabs you um and they played well together and so forth we end up spending a lot of time with them and encouraging them man you guys could be such an outreach for your church you have a good sound put it together and go out into the port charlotte fort myers area and sing and then go hey if you like this come to church on sunday and and you can hear more of this kind of stuff and if we reached your heart and so forth and to be honest with you that's a lot of what we do as b andrews and so we just encouraged them to do that had no idea that that was actually going to be our ministry for that church uh, we had intended to play to a large number of people coming in our and really they they really didn't have a lot of people that came in but we ended up working with their worship team 
and our ministry ended up being to them. And so it's just an example of sometimes ministry isn't what you think it's going to be, but when you see it, you have to take the opportunity and, and jump on it and do the, the thing that is presented before you. And with that, you have to have open eyes. Um, back in the day when we first started, I would say we were probably immature enough that uh, and that includes me and I'm a pastor. I was a pastor then, but immature enough not to have a bigger picture, a bigger view so that when ministry appeared, I wouldn't see it because I would be so focused on playing and what our objective was that was in front of us that I would take the position of, oh man, a lot of people didn't show up. We were a failure. Or I would take the position of, wow, we we presented the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and ask people, would you like to accept Christ into your life? Or would you like to experience a life changing uh, touch of, of, of God in your heart? Would you would you just like to say, God, forgive me and, and go into faith with God and, and just start that relationship? And if nobody would respond, I, my, be so focused in on that happening that I would go, wow, you know, we this was a failure. Ministry didn't happen. But getting a little little better than that and getting to see that ministry is so much bigger. So today we want to take a little bit of time and talking about ministry, uh, intentional and unintentional, and that within itself can be its own discussion. And so we want to break the show up into kind of two parts, um, bad ideas for ministry and good ideas for ministry. So when we start off, we want to start off with a definition of ministry so that we're all talking about the same thing. What is the definition of ministry there, young man? Well, I looked up to uh, the definition of ministry is the work, number one, the work or vocation of a minister of religion. Okay, not, that's barring the governmental term from ministry. Um, but then I looked at this and it says, the action of ministering to someone would be ministry. Um, interesting, I didn't notice that. It it includes that as rare, as a rare definition of it. Huh. Rare? Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. Oh, oh, the spiritual work or service of any Christian or a group of Christians, especially evangelism. And that's interesting because what it means to minister, the verb for it, means to attend to the needs of someone. Okay, so attending to the needs of someone. Now, John and I both work at the youth program here at the Hancock Wesleyan Church, me being the pastor, I bring, um, I work with the the spiritual end of things. So I do a lot of the teaching and and so forth. We have Barry, Michelle West, the husband and wife team. They bring the game end of it because we we do games with the kids to try to help illustrate uh, specific things. And then John is kind of a floater. He works with, um, he does his main thing, which is worship. Uh, but then wherever he's needed, he kind of floats around and, and this is our, our youth team and we work together incredibly well. And by the way, huge kudos to, to Barry and Michelle West for what they do. It's absolutely, uh, and Michelle is, is the big one in leading that. Barry's our tech guy, so he runs all that kind of stuff. And so, um, That's the way that it works. Now, what we're getting ready to do, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back. But when we come back, uh, we have found some of the worst ideas to do uh, in ministry. And uh, specifically, I think John looked these up and these are going to pertain to youth ministry. So what we need you to do, if you if you're ready for a good yuck, you're, you're going to want to hear these. So grab you a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage heading into summertime. So it may be that iced tea, uh, a pop, as we say down in Cincinnati, something like that. But for me, I'm lifting my cup up high and getting a refill of some more coffee. You do the same. And after this break, we'll come back and share with you some of the worst ministry ideas. You're listening to the B. Andrews Radio Show. Get your drink and come on back after this break. He's a real good friend. He wants to start a fight when things aren't right in this world that we're living in. 
someone says to him, Joe, I know that you know that fighting never pays. So instead of a fight when things are right, why don't you start with a quarter parade? things might be when this world comes to an end it won't be long till we're all gone and standing up in heaven and then oh, we'll have no fear when we get there because with the angels we will raise to my lord a song that starts with this chord a song that starts with the chord of praise Hey, if you want to be a part of the show, connect with us on Twitter at B Andrews Band, all lowercase, B A N D R E W S B A N D, or I am us at Facebook by going to B Andrews, that's first name B, B E, last name Andrews, A N D R E W S. Welcome back to the B Andrews Radio Show. I'm one of your co hosts, Eric Hambrock. Uh, part of the B. Andrews Band across the room is your other co-host, John, part of the B. Andrews Band. By the way, this Friday, if you are in the central Wisconsin area, uh, B. Andrews will be doing a concert at the Tri-County High School, 7 p.m. So that's May 19th, Friday, 7 p.m., Tri-County High School. One of the things that we're going to be doing is is an air guitar contest, and that's where we'll be doing some guitar riffs and bring some of the kids up front if they want to try and attempt. The audience will be the judge, and we'll bring the kids up front. They all get these inflatable guitars, and John will play some guitar riffs, and they have to do their best air guitar that, that goes along with it. We got a couple of surprise songs that we've been working on to go along with that. I have to say, in that rehearsal last night, those really sounding good. That was really sounding good. So um, anyway, that'll be happening. Winner of the air guitar contest gets a brand new guitar. That's right. It's from the Rogue Guitar Starter Kit. It is a guitar. And an uh, amp. And an amp. And the chords deal with it. And, and the chords picks, I think, are also in there. Yep. I believe it has a strap. I couldn't find the strap, but... Okay, well, the should kit, be in there. It should be in there. The kit came from Musician's Friend. It is ordered. Uh, we had donations come in to help us do that. And to all those people, we want to say thank you for helping support this. And we're working really hard to try to get people out and to the concert. Um, moving on with our, our ministry idea, the worst <laughs> ministry ideas... Uh, I don't know if these are the worst of, of all time. But, these are pretty bad. <laughs> but they are pretty bad. John was sharing them with me. And so I'm going to kind of turn it over to you, young man. What are our worst ministry ideas? Okay, so let's keep in mind that what makes ministry is attending to the needs of someone, right? Okay. Right? Especially evangelism, because as Christians, we know that someone's greatest need is Jesus Christ. Well, we do other things like, like for instance, in, in this case, a lot of these have to do with really bad game ideas for kids for youth group you know we play games in youth group to engage the kids so that we can minister to them so we can witness to them and show them jesus christ right so the so, idea is to break down walls so that we can speak to them yeah. about jesus christ kids like to have fun that's right well, okay. everybody likes to have fun but okay so these are some of the really really bad ones and keep in mind what makes them bad is that nobody's needs were met except maybe laughing 
Laughter? Afterwards. Laughter is a... La- but that's, a yeah. con- that's an incredibly retrospective, because I guarantee you the, the rest of the people involved were laughing. All okay. right. So, go. One, chocolate slide to the altar. That is as bad as it sounds. Okay, you gotta armed, explain this. Armed with the story of a misheard, they misheard from an uber famous youth ministry guru, they concluded a Choctober event with the youth pastor unfurling a slip and slide down the center aisle of the sanctuary. Oh. Yep. Then they, then the students poured chocolate syrup down the slip and slide like oh, flower no. petals in some sort of bad wedding idea. Oh, then no. Then the youth pastor took off his shirt. Oh no. And went down the slide. Off the other end and into the altar. <laughs> oh, it, altar. The, 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 into the altar? I have no idea where this was. So was it one of those altars that like had the curtain across the front of it because it was on a four leg pedestal and he just, and then right behind the curtain to disappear and be seen for nevermore? Because I... when the pastor or senior pastor finds <laughs> out about this, he will be seen for nevermore. I'm telling just, you right now. I just, I don't know. I don't know what the purpose was. It doesn't say. I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I have a question. What? Is he still the youth pastor no. there? <laughs> I, have serious, I have serious doubts about that. Okay. And what's with the rose petals? Well, the chocolate rose petal chocolate <laughs> syrup. He needed something to slide on. <laughs> I guess. So that it would be soft and caressing for when he took off his shirt. Dude, I, I don't know, man. I just so don't many, know. It's so bad on so many levels. I don't know. I Next. Don't know. Okay. Number two, crushed by a beach ball. Okay. Remember, uh-huh. this did not This did not meet any needs. It probably created them. Okay. Another youth pastor bought one of those eight-foot beach balls for some game he read about on a website. <laughs> he read it <laughs> offline. <laughs> And decided to test it in the gym. Wait a minute. He saw it online. It had to be true. Yeah, basically. (laughs) They had plenty of time to rethink tossing it off the second story into the waiting arms of the seventh grader because it wouldn't fit through the double doors. Second story? But nothing stopped them. They deflated it a bit, moved it through the doors, then reinflated it, and had the student waiting far, far below to catch it. <laughs> they tossed it over the balcony and watched as the seventh grader was laid out flat by the ginormity of the beach ball. <laughs> there was a video made. It was deleted. I bet it was. That was incriminating evidence. No, I know I know what need this met. Say I'm the youth pastor. Hey, you know that seventh grade kid that's really been annoying me? <laughs> Put him down there. He'll catch it. Hey, hey, hey. Catch this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, this one's short. Number three. All right. Hot tub baptismal. Okay. I Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I have a confession. I've actually thought about this. <laughs> You know you can get those portable water heaters to make everything to make anything into a hot tub. Bad idea. Worse that the pastor found out from a picture posted online of his child in the hot tub slash baptismal. Oh wait a minute. So oh oh was there was his wait, girl? Wait, wait a minute. You're telling me that the the hot tub baptismal didn't work? Well, how do you know? Have you seen the pictures of your kid? <laughs> and is that his girlfriend sitting next to him in the hot tub? Oh, oh, oh that went different. Yeah, see, because it doesn't tell you who's around him in the hot tub. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> or was it the pastor's daughter and the boy the pastor didn't want her seeing next to them? We'll, just, was... baptize, we'll just baptize them together. together. That's not happening. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, man. Does he still have a job at that church? (laughs) Okay. Boiled egg eating contest. You you have a craft where you end up with way too many boiled eggs. You have an opportunity for a youth game, right? (laughs) Something tells me this probably happened right after Easter. Okay. Okay. Everything went well until in the sudden death round. No. Yeah. After eating about eight eggs already, one of the students decided to take a shortcut and not remove the shell. How did he swallow they that? They ate the whole egg. No. That is not possible. 
that, especially out of a unfully developed human, I, I don't, how can you do that? Ben could do it. Oh, Ben well. could do it. Ben could totally. Do now it. I don't know that he could have done it at that age. You're shaking. Your, you don't have yeah. to ra- rattle. Rattle. Okay, he's yeah, shaking he shaking his totally head. Yes, totally do that. <laughs> Explaining to the parents that it was the student's idea didn't help. <laughs> He is not the youth pastor anymore. He tried to do plausible deniability. It wasn't my idea. Your kid thought of it. Okay, now this next one, I've actually taken part in a in, in a youth event very, very similar. Okay, spam toss at a target. Oh, wait a minute. You've done this? Not this specifically. Okay, how much of this have you done? The launching of the spam part, there was additions to it. But but you've done the spam. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, except, you've let people throw spam at you. Well, the the people in this. How let come me read I it. Let me read it. Let me read this. it. Let me read it. Okay. As far as this youth pastor was concerned, spam was much better suited as a projectile than food. So they got the water balloon slingshot out of the closet and had some interns paint a target on some plastic sheeting. Intern keyword interns. Yes. <laughs> They then held the contest in the room with the sacred floor. So that's probably the sanctuary. <laughs> but made sure to put they hey, they made sure to put plastic all the way from the slingshot to the target okay. hung in the middle of the room. Okay. First team steps up, releases the spam, and it shoots completely through the target into the wall behind it. Oh. They cleaned the chunks of spam off of everywhere. They they got it all. But spam the, splatters? But the smell gave it away for a couple of days. Spam? Sp- see, I don't know. I don't play with my food. Who would know that spam would splatter? Well, spam's not really food. Well, that's true. That's that's <laughs> true. Yes, okay. So I was at a camp, right? And right. they took, like, they took spam, they dunked it in tomato sauce, and then they launched it from the balloon launchers. <laughs> And we were supposed to hit them with badminton rackets for points. You subjected your... See, this is how the stuff... It, this is how people get by with it. Hey, we so were... you kids go and do it, and then you don't come home and tell your parents because you think, oh, that was so cool. We were outside. That's, that, that's the first thing. Like, number two... And I just thought about this. They had... Oh, no, that was the other camp. I was going to say, they had a problem with bears at that camp. I <laughs> Here, tag kids with spam and send them out in the woods where the bears are. Yeah. Sounds like, <laughs> it's not baiting if I cover myself in meat. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, bear bait. <laughs> it's like, anyway. So, but yeah, I've done something similar to that. Could this. you tell those interns were from the city? <laughs> so... That's- that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, those have been our our worst ministry ideas. We're going to head off into a break about now, and um, you're going to need a refill. I've been yucking pretty good while John's talking and killing my coffee. I imagine you're doing the same with your cup. So let's go get a refill, and let's talk about ministry ideas that just might be good ideas. All right. You're listening to the B. Andrews Radio Show. Refresh that cup and come on back. on the world When it comes to this, Lord, I'm something of an expert I've been on my knees a hundred times before But this time things are so much different from the man that I was I ain't no more Every time I get this close, I give 
Welcome back to the B. Andrews Radio Show. By the way, if you want to connect with us, we would absolutely love that. Uh, you can do that by going to our Facebook page. Uh, go to Facebook and look up B. Andrews, like in somebody's name. First name, B-E, as in B, last name, Andrews, A-N-D-R-E-W-S. Or find us at Twitter at B. Andrews Band and uh, and tweet to us. Uh, send us out some information. And one other thing, we would love your help in order to expand our listenership. Share our show around. Be a part of our B. Andrews Radio Show group that's on our Facebook page. And uh, we would we would really appreciate that. If you like what you're hearing, you're having a laugh, you would like to help our country out, uh, your fellow neighbor, and so forth. Let's let's change the dialogue in our country. Quit talking about all the negativity things that are out there. Let's talk about some things that are positive and uplifting and and can really make a difference in our society. So you know what? Share share the B Andrews Radio Show and um, have a little bit of fun with people and get to see them laugh. We would really appreciate it and appreciate your comments on that. Um, Looking at ministry ideas, back to the definition of what it means to minister, that definition is to meet the needs of people or to meet people's needs where they are. So um, we, we just talked about some things that would probably be really bad ideas, um, and let's talk about some things that might be some good ideas, uh, meeting people's needs where they are and not the standard kind of things. Um, here's some standard things that a lot of churches do. We do, uh, our own Hancock church, Hancock Wesleyan church. Well, one of the things that we do is a food pantry and we do a food distribution and that food distribution is not just for, we, we run it two ways. We run one on a Sunday or excuse me, Saturday. In fact, we got one coming up this Saturday, the the 20th. And what that is for is a lot of our people and so forth to come in and it's to offset their food costs and anyone else in the community, because it's, it's, not just for our church, it's it's anyone to offset their food costs. So we don't want people to feel like, oh, if you can't afford and blah, blah, blah. It, this is, hey, we bring this in and redistribute it in order to offset your food bill costs in order to, so that your money will stretch further. So that's one of the reasons why we do that. We also offer an emergency food pantry. So if people come in and all of a sudden they just moved into the area or find themselves in a dire situation, uh, where they need something immediately right now, well, then we'll walk them through our food pantry and fill them up on about a week to two weeks worth of food uh, to get them through an emergency situation. So that's one thing. We have another church that does uh, clothing uh, for people. We have um, it here in our area, we have uh, there are churches that try to do things to meet other needs of people. Uh, if we have a fire in the area, there's usually fundraising for them. And so those are, are very, very common things that happen. But meeting people's needs, one of the biggest need, as what was uh, John had mentioned earlier, is their spiritual need. And um, so I have in my hand some ideas. And, and um, let, let me further that thought back up one step. To meet some people's spiritual needs, there are walls that need to be broken down because uh, people are tough. They don't want to show their heart or they don't want to admit that they that their heart is aching, that there's something inside that is missing. And so you end up having to the best way that you can make connections with people to say, hey, I love you and I, I want to share with you my life. And in sharing with you my life, I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to be transparent so that you can see me. And if you let down your wall just a little bit, too, I want to share with you the thing that has changed my life. And that's what all this is about, because the greatest thing that you can share with anybody is Jesus Christ. And so here's some ideas that I found on the Internet that I thought were pretty pretty neat. There's a church in New Jersey that was looking to create a new community initiative that would take church outside of their walls. So they were inspired by, get this, by John Bon Jovi's Pay What You Can Community Restaurant. Did you know that he had one of those? Yeah, Pay What You Can Restaurant. 
and this church opened up their own. So they wanted to reach out to their community and offer a meal that was delicious and dignified. So many uh, of their customers are homeless and they live in extreme poverty uh, or are domestic uh, violence victims. So the initiative bridges the gap between people of diverse backgrounds. Um, and so what they do is they have this restaurant and it meets the needs of the people and it's just pay what you can. And they set the table for them. They're waited on them. So if you got a homeless person that maybe hasn't eaten out for a long time, it helps to bring dignity and makes them feel like they're in in society, and that's what this church does. Uh, there's another church, a Catholic church in Arizona, has a specific ministry uh, to the hurting, which accomplishes its mission primarily on social media. It's Facebook group. It's a Facebook group for those who are grieving. A uh, couple that lost their teenage son in a tragic car accident set this up. They didn't know where to turn or how to get through their grief. Uh, so they found this thing called Solace with Others, and they open up a Facebook page for dialogue and discussion and have gotten other people in on it. And they minister to other people who are grieving through uh, just doing social media on Facebook. It's a place to go where you can just you just put it out there and tell how your heart's feeling. I, that's pretty awesome group. I think I think we could probably stand for a couple of hundred more of those kinds of things. Um there's a Boston church. It's called The Intersection. They identify the needs in the community for free, accessible exercise and heart-healthy cooking classes. Their, their, their community is predominantly African-American women. Guess what the number one cause of death in African-American women are? Heart disease. So what they try to do to help their community and minister, meet the needs of their community, they started with a Zumba class. And after the Zumba class, a Bible study, catch this, um, that Zumba class and Bible study now makes up two thirds of their church's attendance. Yeah, check that out. Pretty cool. And meeting practically meeting the needs of the community, you know, and that's that's some real visionary kind in of stuff in both ways, too, because of making sure to have the Bible class afterwards. Yep. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, chain reaction uh, ministry here in Oklahoma City. Uh, there was a pastor who wanted to offer neighbors in need and homeless people a hand up, but not a handout. That that was that was his thinking, and so he he has done a ministry equipping those in need with bikes so that they can commute to work. Can't get you a car. It's way expensive. I take all the resources I have to do one car or to do something else. So, but you know what? I can do a lot of bikes. So if you're willing to do this and do bikes, he's jumped in and asked other people, hey, I got people who need bikes. Check this out. Since 2013, he has been donated 1,400 bikes. Where do you keep them? Where do they keep them? No, no, no. That's it. They come in. The idea is to get them into the hands of people. So to be honest with you, if he's got a lot on hand, he's not doing his job. And yeah, that's so, true. so no, basically that's true. he's getting them out of there. Wow. Um, a mother child resource. Now, I've seen this done quite a bit. This is right here in Wisconsin. Um, a mom uh, at the, a single mom at this church was in desperate need for basics just for her baby. Um, she now has given 3,500 boxes of baby cloths and supplies to single moms who are financially struggling. So what she has done, she saw her need and how difficult that it was. And she turned around and said, hey, you want to get the attention of single moms who are struggling financially and so forth? Kind of like what we do is for everybody just to make your dollars stretch. Well, you know what? Help single moms get their dollars to stretch. And what is their biggest need? Diapers and wet wipes. Those are expensive and they can get expensive. And so she has put together boxes of diapers and wet wipes in order to help single moms. Here's the, that's just some ministry ideas. And uh, I got something that I want to share with you about a ministry, about ministry ideas. So I'm going to take a little break and we want to wrap this up today. You're listening to the B Andrews radio show. Come back. I got something I want to throw at you.
it comes to this, Lord, I'm something of an expert. I've been on my knees a hundred times before. Rock. This time things are so much different. The man that I was, I ain't no more. Well, every time I get this close, I give up before I go too far. But this time I'll let nothing stop me. I'll go until I got no more. So batten down the hatches. Say hello to arms. Going so much further than I've ever been before. Won't be easy. I don't know what's in store. Even if I stand alone, I'm taking on the world. So batten down the hatches. Say hello to arms. Going so much further than I've ever been before. Won't be easy. Don't know what's in store. Even if I stand alone, I'm taking on the world. Andrews Radio Show. Welcome back to the B. Andrews Radio Show. I'm your co-host, Eric. Um, and I want to do a, a summation on today's show, by the way. Something I haven't said today. Uh, cups up. So, John, there you go. He's got his cup up over there across the room. Um, in all this that we talked about in in ministry, there's a there's a couple of things that are required here. Um, in, in, in order to do it, number one, it's heart and eyes, a heart that says, yeah, I'd love to do that. I just, there's something in my heart that just wants to give to other people and eyes that can see the opportunity to do it. As I had mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, there was a time that when it came to our music, that if it didn't go the way that I thought that it should go, I would say it's a failure and I wouldn't have eyes that would be focused on finding opportunities of, of how to minister or meet people's needs where they were with those who are around me. And that's the whole point when you go out and intentionally minister. So sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the time, one of the things we need to do when we wake up in the morning is just say, okay, God. Open my eyes that I, I could just see this around me and help me to have the heart in order to, to, to meet people's needs where they are so that they can see you. Um, I'm reminded, I, I told the story last time and I, I want to reiterate this. When we were out on tour, we finished up, a pastor took us out to dinner, went to an Italian, little, little Italian restaurant, great food. And we went in there and there was a birthday party for the owner that was going on. I think her name was Donna Marie, as I recall. I um, can't remember now. But as we were there, uh, Pastor, she asked Pastor what we were doing there and said, hey, these guys are a band. They just played at our church. And she said, can you play me a song? Now, <clears throat> it was 15 minutes to closing. There were a couple of other patrons that were in. And we could have gotten real shy and said, um... Well, no, our instruments aren't here. And we could have come up with all kinds of excuses uh, for not doing it. And they would all have been very legitimate. But instead, I, I just said to John real quick, hey, hurry up, go grab your guitar. And he came back in with it. He brought in a my harmonica, of all things. He wasn't going to let me out of it. And we sang to her for her birthday. Now, it doesn't sound like much in the way of ministry, but... It broke down walls, not for us. We're going to be leaving. It broke down walls for the pastor of that church in order to minister to her. People see Jesus Christ through those who follow him. The way the people see God is the way that we show people God. That's open up your eyes. Let God open up your eyes and show you and have a heart to do ministry for him meet the needs of others around you that's how we can change the world that's going to be it for us today we're going to be back here next tuesday two o'clock so be sure to tune in to the b andrews radio show god bless and we'll see you here next tuesday take care everybody